Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, y'all, so it's starting to look like Carlissa is trying to get back at Blueface. It's either that or she's trying to get back at Jaden be because now she's trying to get all Blueface's exes, current girls, and side chicks on her show. Well, Krishan was on her show because she went to go see Junior, but now she had Angela on her show. And she's looking for Lily and Chelsea. She wrote, where's Lily and Chelsea? I need to talk to all the exes who saw me in these trenches. Carlissa posted a teaser from the next episode that will drop of her asking Angela if she's still messing with Blueface. And obviously, as soon as that episode drops, I'm going to let you guys know what her answer was. So here's the clip. Word to God, we talked and planned this. I know her. This is John's first love. Oh, God. So are you still messing around with him? Well, do you want me to be honest or do you want me to lie? <laughs> I don't even have to watch the show to know that she's going to say she's still messing with Blueface. But good thing Carlos is asking the right questions. Now, as for Jayla, she is currently spending time with Blueface in Atlanta. Blueface's friend posted a clip where you can see that Jayla is in the house. And obviously, we already know about her. So that's how we know she's there with Blueface. Here's the clip. Give me the fucking bottle, you weirdo. You always want to be on his You being weird, cuz. You want me to post you that bad, bitch? Move. Shut up, you fat. Fuck off me. So, Carlissa recently got a tattoo, and I'm actually shocked because of all the crap she spoke about Jaden and Krishan's tattoos. Carlissa ended up going live to go off on her sons for having something to say about her wanting to start an OF account. So here's a clip from Carlissa's live. But if anybody know Lily and Chelsea, I'm looking for Lily and Chelsea. After I ran into Angela yesterday, I said, you know what? I need to run into, it inspired me, y'all. I need to run into a few more young people that was raised so closely to my children. Because that uplifted my spirit. I'm I think it's so funny that she's lying saying she ran into Angela when she knows that she told Angela to show up so she can be on her show and she can ask her about Blueface. Go and find all the people that were connected to my children growing up and have them all speak about it. How, I mean, how, how, why didn't I think of that in the first place? Like, my, my kids had like confidants. They had like people very close in my proximity. You know what I'm saying? And I tell Boot Games mom, I know she going through it. Her, her heart is probably feeling betrayed and it's like worse than a nigga leaving you. Like, damn, if I'd have left your ass on a doorstep, I could have made something out of my life. You know what I'm saying? It's like being in a war and you look up and the motherfucker left you in the war by yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the worst feeling ever to be out in war with your kids for them to turn on you. Like, I don't have no, I can't say it properly. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to do this counseling shit. I'm going to do it just because... But I can't promise y'all that I'm not fixing to look at one of them and be say what the fuck is on my mind. Like, it just makes you like, you know how when you get to the end of a relationship and you don't sugarcoat shit and you just say what's on your mind? Like, that's what I'm feeling. That's what she's feeling like. I'm not finna sugarcoat shit for your ass. I done sugarcoated enough shit. And after I ran into Angela yesterday and she reminded me of all the many things I did to get Jonathan into this. And you guys have to remember, maybe I didn't sign him a record deal. Maybe I didn't take him to WAG. Even though I did send him to another label and he chose that label, that's how hands-on I was. Even from Ohio, I still had power out here in these streets, okay? He had options, okay? Just like his schools and his colleges and his high schools and his football teams, he always had options. If a motherfucker wasn't doing what I said, do we got options. We moving over here. We ain't sticking around for this shit. So when I say that, I say I say that to say uh, Jonathan's mindset, his pettiness, his wittiness, his cunningness, his I don't give a fuck attitude came from somewhere. Okay, he didn't just fall off the sky with all this confidence and all this, 
you know what I'm saying? Shaking, baking, moving, you know what I'm saying? Get up and get back down and get, he, he, he is literally the only child that I raised from birth to the doorstep. The only one of them, okay? The other one, the daddy came, Andre, daddy, I mean, Andre went to jail at 16, but Jonathan, the only one, and he watched me and he listened to me and he paid attention and he took pride into listening and responding respectfully his whole life. So he just took all my shit and then just tried to run off and be like, fuck you, ho, you a ho. No, 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 no. So when y'all saying, why you doing your son like that, nigga, we at war. Okay, we out here in these streets, tit for tatting. Okay, and we gonna tit for tat till he tap out. So if I gotta put my clitoris up on this motherfucking internet to show y'all where the fuck that motherfucker came from, I'm okay with that. Okay? I am signed, sealed, saved, and delivered. Okay? I'm okay with letting this motherfucker know how this gonna go. I'm not Rock. I'm not Jaden. I'm not your daddy. Okay? I had to bend over sometimes for your motherfucking ass to eat. I had to go to sleep hungry sometimes for your bitch to eat. Okay? I had to buy an extra plane ticket because you came with a bitch at, at 15. Okay? We gonna do this shit till the wheels fall off. Okay? I don't got no fucks to give. I'm 51 years old. I'm halfway to the upper room. Okay? That bitch is halfway to the upper room. You not finna out, try to out smart mouth me. You not finna out embarrass me. You not finna do none of that. We gonna rock and roll this motherfucker till the wheels fall off, okay? That's what we gonna do. All right? You don't get no Dre pass. You don't get no Cali pass. Okay? Because you out here with all my shit. You, out, you got all my plays, motherfucker. You got all my shit out here. You in these streets with all my shit. Not your daddy shit. Not your grandmammy shit. My shit. Okay? You out here making all my little... You got all my plays in your playbook, bitch. Out here talking about I was a hoe. Nigga, if I was a hoe, what, you was eating the food? If I was a hoe, you was driving the whips? If I was a hoe, you was rocking the jerseys? You was rocking the sidekicks? You was driving a, a scooter a moped at eight years old? So if I was a hoe, I wonder who my pimp was. Because I ain't never had a pimp. Something like a pimp. I ain't never had a pimp. So, yeah, it's cool, though. It's cool. It's it's it's, it's going to do what it do. That's one thing it's going to do, y'all. It's going to do what it do. It's going to do what it do. But we out here, and that's just what it is. So, don't send me no inboxes. How you over here going back and forth with your son? Bitch, because it's my son. That's why. Okay, ain't none of your motherfucking business why I'm doing what I'm doing. And if I decide to show the pink part and the brown booty part, that's my business. Okay? So when a mother when your son call you a hoe, you better show that motherfucker what you working with, bitch. Bet you I won't sit out here and let my sons that I done work slave, drive up and down the road to prisons begging judges and police officers, sucking balls and dick bending over and coughing? Bitch, I had to bend over and cough for mine. I had to show a motherfucking police officer the crack of my ass and didn't get a goddamn dollar. Okay? So, I don't need y'all in my inbox, you Christian women, you, oh, saved, holy fire, filled with the Holy Ghost with y'all motherfucking Christmas trees up and your goddamn uh, boyfriends in your bedroom uh, and somebody else's husband on your couch uh, and somebody else's husband on your couch. I don't need y'all to come tell me the rule books. Bitch, I know the rule books. I'm saved. Because if I was a hoe, I would have went straight to Birdman and got the bag, bitch. I know what I gave up to sit in them fucking hot ass football stands. I ain't even supposed to be this black. Okay? I ain't even supposed to be this dark skin, motherfucker. I was in them football fields. Now my shit black as hell. And don't get me twisted. I love my chocolate. But bitch, I'm a little burnt in a couple places. I ain't supposed to be burnt from sitting in them motherfucking stands. My voice is fucked up. Why y'all talking about she sound like Kermit the Frog? You know how many motherfucking games I done yelled and screamed and back niggas up off my son's little scrawny ass? 150 pounds on a football field running from 300 foot 300 pound niggas you know how you know who talked that nigga up off my son ass me me 
Your son was locked in on my motherfucking ass. That's why he couldn't get to my son. That's why my son got the scholarship and yours didn't. Me. Okay? So don't come in my inbox no more, no more. Till this war is over, okay? Until you hear Jonathan and Andre say, I bow down, mama, I apologize. You was that bitch. You was that mama. You handled this shit. You made sure shit. Until we hear that shit, bitch, we going all the way. We going all the way, baby. I don't give a fuck about Erica Badu, Tina Turner, Tina Knowles. I don't give a motherfuck about T.D. Jakes, bitch. We going all the way, okay? Call me crazy. Call me 5150. I bet you these bitches bow down. I bet you they don't forget, okay? Because when these motherfucking gray hairs and this motherfucking hemorrhoid hit that motherfucking internet, them motherfucking, they friends going to be looking at them like, that's your mama shit? Yeah, bitch, that's that hoe. That's that hoe you was calling a hoe, huh? Oh, 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 you forgot? Because <laughs> when this gray hair and these motherfucking hemorrhoids hit this bitch, baby, I don't give a fuck about none of what y'all talking about, okay? <laughs> Jonathan and Andre gonna end up in that motherfucking pool pit talking about Jesus I'm sorry because everywhere they go somebody gonna pull one of these hemorrhoids or these gray hairs out and BAM they gonna remember who the fuck they called a hoe I'm gonna be out here wrestling with these big niggas okay till one of them or both of them say you know what mama I'm wrong I should not have did that I don't have a fucking friend in this world whose mama put up with and did more shit than you did Cause I can't go to war with them. The, the, I can't go to war with them the way y'all go to war. Okay? My sons don't understand that shit. They out here calling me hoes and bitches and talking about I wasn't no good. Okay? Ain't no. I done already read them all them motherfucking scriptures y'all done sent me. Okay? Now it's time to get hands on. Okay? So if anybody seen Lily and Chelsea, I would like to start there. I would love to start there. Because I slapped one of Andre bitches before, too. For giving him a gun or hiding a gun, whatever in the fuck she did. Yes, I slapped one of Andre's um, women's, too. You know why? Because I was out here in these Los Angeles streets trying to protect my black sons. Trying to keep them breathing. Trying to keep their motherfucking asses out the goddamn joint. Hairs, hemorrhoids, and this pink and brown shit that's about to go down. And your homeboys talking about that's your mama ass. Yep, that's his mama ass. Yeah, he said his mama a hoe. Let me. She gonna show you how the best hoe work. Yes, that's his mama ass. So every time them motherfuckers step outside, go to the club, the grocery store, I hope they put this motherfucking hemorrhoid on the goddamn billboard out this bitch. You hear me? You motherfuckers better put this ass on candy motherfucking camera. So when them motherfuckers get 50 years old in church, they remember that they called their mother a whore. You call me, you be, I'm gonna be the best at it, motherfucker. I'm going to be the best at it. So yes, I did. I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. And I want all of you motherfuckers to screenshot this motherfucker and send it to their ass the first day I post it. I'm talking about the first day I'm going to show you the motherfucking nook and cranny that that motherfucker's head came out of. Okay? I'm going to show you the left lip that the motherfucker stretched down that I need to probably get cut up. Okay, you you gonna show that motherfucker you came right out of here. Don't you never forget it. This where your ass came from, okay? So Carlissa's stepdaughter Lay recently spoke out on a live where she says that she feels like her step siblings Dre, Blueface, and Callie are all spoiled and ungrateful. So here's a clip from Lay's live. Yeah, they're all rotten and like, I understand Carlos might do too much sometimes, but there are people out there dying to have a mom like her. And the fact that um, they're just, like, being this ungrateful in my face is just like, oh, wow. Like, now I gotta go home to my mom. First of all, I thank her. I'm gonna thank my step. Oh, well, she's on live right now. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to thank you, Carlissa, and I always do, because I've told you already, I think they're all ungrateful, and I even told Callie in the, in the conversation that we had the other day, 
I said you're super ungrateful. Like, why are you being so ungrateful to your mom? And I'm not gonna share what she said on live, but <clears throat> it's just like a damn. No, that's like a slap in the face. Cause everything that you're doing, I wish I'm, I wish I had somebody that's pushing me ten times harder. You know what I'm saying? Like me personally, I wish I had a team. I wish I had somebody that's like trying to build this team for me to go off and be successful in my life. Like you don't have to need or want for anything, and you're just ungrateful as fuck. Now, as for Krishan, she was recently out having a good time with Rico and her friends, and it looks like her and Rico were pretty cozy together. It's nice to see that she's just having a good time and she's happy. It's pretty clear that Carlissa's show is about to get interesting now that she is going to search for all Blueface's exes and or his side chick slash other chicks. So I kind of understand where Lay is coming from about all Carlissa's kids being ungrateful. Obviously, she sees it from a different point of view because she's a stepsister. Because Dre already called Blueface ungrateful. It's pretty clear that Dre is ungrateful. And now Lay is calling Callie ungrateful. Callie even mentioned it on the show that they always got what they wanted as kids but their mom was absent, so for them, they were more focused on the fact that she wasn't around a lot rather than appreciating all the material items. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the post notifications if you want to be notified every time I post a new video. Thanks for watching.